KCLR. Okay, so welcome along to another episode of GAA Legends here on KCLR, and I'm joined by none other than nine time winner, Mr. Noel Hickey. Noel, how are you? Good, Stevie. All good, yeah. Listen, good. It's a fantastic day here in Dunhamagan. Lovely day here, and um, I was trying to make the most of it at the farm and that, but um, great to have you here anyway. I was about to say, you got enough rain last week, did you? You done a we bit did of did enough last Friday, all right, so um, your door know. fell last Friday and did all year, so. Um, but you're lucky if to take what you're given. You're done for a while, no more rain dance. Hopefully not. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully say dry Sunday, but I don't know, it's looking too That's good what either. They're, they're giving a chance of showers, are they? They are a chance of showers, so I suppose it might impact on the game, but generally when the game starts up, the players are kind of go out the window of what's happening overhead yeah. and um, it's actually worth for the supporters sitting in the stand getting wet in the players. Yeah, I, well, that's true. I know my own dad got uh, tickets at the front, my sister got tickets in the front row of the Cusack, so yeah. they're kind of worried about the weather yeah, for the first yeah. time ever. Yeah, I remember actually being at the 99 All Ireland sitting in the Cusack against Cork and a lash rain and just soaking it. But then playing another match in the rain, it wouldn't bother you. And come here, when the lads are settling in now Friday evening, the team has been named and all that, would the weather even come into the tall knoll? Would they even look ahead and say? Ah, they'd look ahead, all right, but. Um, Look, a few odd showers wouldn't matter once it's not like against Limerick there back a couple of years ago in the semi-final where it was just torrential rain and wind. But um, they'd look into it all right, but it's not going to really bother them too much. Good. Anyway, back to your own playing days. Yeah. You're one of our recent retirees, as we <laughs> like to say. But uh, when you were playing, what would you be doing the week coming up to it, Noel? The week coming up, I'd just be carrying on as normal as every other week. I'd work away in the farm and usually be at quarantine, so we cutting corner, corner that and uh, just be busy out and um, I'd work right up to Saturday evening it wouldn't bother me I'd be if I was sitting down the side I suppose I wouldn't be doing my routine and um, I just prefer to keep myself active and uh, look forward to the match on the Sunday The Brian Cody and the lads never just grab you aside and say listen would you give the farm a break for a <laughs> week or two we're not scared No 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 not at all Fair as the Brian did look you go off and do whatever you're happiest at and um, maybe it's different now alright but um, back then no you just you work away and do whatever you got to do and then look forward to the match I suppose in one way I was happier farming because I was kind of away on my own working away where some of the lads maybe were in jobs where they were meeting a lot of people and talking about the match, the match the whole time oh, and maybe yeah. driving a bit cracked on about the match the whole time. So looking for, for me, it wor- wor- looking for tickets, yeah, and uh, looking for wondering who's playing and that, but uh, no, it was, you know, I was happy enough farming away. Right, obviously you've had an illustrious career. Um, I actually was just doing the maths on it this morning. Yeah. Personally, you have more All-Irelands than the counties of Galway, Clare for together. <laughs> well the same amount actually They have nine between them you've Yeah nine. yeah 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 nine medals Look uh, How does that sit with you at night time Do you ever sit awake <laughs> at night time And say Jeez I'm nine. nine How do I get yeah, nine yeah, yeah. Look when you're playing You actually don't It doesn't come into your head at all But I suppose you always say Later on you have to look back at it When I look back at it now It was fantastic And I joined the panel in 2000 And we were lucky enough At that time we won the Under 21 all Ireland in 99 And Brian brought in Maybe five or six was off that panel And Kilkenny were after lose in 98 all Ireland in 99 so I just remember that 2000 all Ireland playing awfully it was just no way we were going to be best I remember John Power DJ Willie O'Connor serious names playing awfully awfully beating them the first year of the back door in 98 so you can't beat a bit of hurt and a bit, I suppose, a bit of looking for a bit of revenge going out against them so we just got in a great role then and great players came along then like Henry was playing then Eddie Brennan you know, Tommy, JG, all these lads coming along. So, like, we just, I was lucky just to, you, you to be in, involved you, in a great bunch of lads at one time. A, a great bunch of lads probably doesn't do it justice. It's like, yeah. uh, like many people say it's the greatest hurling team there ever was. Like, you know, that's yeah, they were, they, were, they were great hurlers. Like, um, you look at Henry, JG, Tommy, like, three of the best, really, but they were fantastic hurlers. But the, the desire they had and the hunger, determination, the work they used to put in, I think that's what set them apart. Like, no point in having all the skill in the world if you haven't the other fish inside you so they definitely had it along with the other legs. no matter what interview you look back at and you see some of the greatest hurlers ever and they say who didn't you like facing in your career yeah. your name is top of that Christmas tree Noel. <laughs> what's that about yeah yeah uh, geez, I don't know about that um, it is I can tell you was, I don't know and even, even even your own Kilkenny colleagues will yeah, say yeah, when yeah, they were yeah, training yeah, yeah. they often Noel Hickey <laughs> yeah well sure look I suppose um, no, I just played I suppose I was full back and um I suppose I, I, I like playing full-back. A lot of people don't like playing full-back and to me, like, I might roam out the pitch now and again, but generally full-back, when you get used to playing it there, it's just anticipating when the ball is going to land in front of your man and just go for it, have no doubts in your mind that you want to miss the ball, just go right through it. And um, the day is hanging behind your man, mind the goal, that's totally gone, forget it. But even when I was playing full-back, if you're inside, Michael Cavanaugh one corner and I start with Willie O'Connor and Jackie Turrell come in, like a great man beside me and... Um, Nowadays, the game has switched so much, like uh, you might just want, you might be in there on your own, or two men in there, and more space, more running, like you go back to 2016 All-Ireland against the Prairie, 
Joey Holden was in full back, but he was nearly on his own in there on Jamie Callan and the ball that was coming in like that was fair to Joey, it was fierce hard to defend that day, so look at Hopefully it'll go better this day. Do you sit at home, look at the telly and shout at it and say, if I was there, this is what I'd know. Be honest, <laughs> would you? I don't, well, to be honest with you, uh, I retired um, from Inter-County in 2012 and um, at that stage, I was kind of a sub that year and I knew my days of getting back on the team were probably done. So I was happy enough to finish with Kenny and go back and commit to the club 100%. And, um, and even the year or two after that, when Kenny played in Ireland, I didn't miss it one bit. But now, even now, coming up, I'd really be going... God, I'd love to be back in the middle of that yeah. now. Like, just when it goes away from your bitch, you'd love to be back on it. And that's what people say. Like, you have to make the most of it when you're young and you can still do it. You just have to give it your all, and you only get one chance. At it. I was asking the lads, some of the guests during the week, and they were saying um, some of them had rituals, some of them had superstitions. Had you any yourself? I didn't really. Um, the only thing I would do is, uh, I suppose, my lace and my boots. I would tie my lace about four times for a match. I'd have to have them exactly. <laughs> Go on the right tightness something too tight too loose I'd always be tying my lace forever it was but once the match is start then I'd be I'd be grand off I go but that'd be the only thing really I'd do you forget about the laces forget about them then just if they're open or not open <laughs> just tear away anyway come here you've had a couple of career um, threatening injuries in your yeah. career but, and, and also you didn't had a life threatening injury yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to call it that at the yeah, time yeah, yeah. you still bounce back from them all yeah well sure I suppose the the, the heart that was in 2005 we were training away after it was grand and I just had awful pains in my head, chest and everything and um, it was real warm weather and it was freezing so I said something wrong here anyway and a few pound dollars weren't working so <laughs> I went into hospital then and just got a check so I just had a, a virus in the heart, the muscle in the heart just inflamed so I remember uh, that time you had to sleep from one o'clock to three o'clock in the day in the ward I remember waking up, waking up whatever day and I saw five, five coats around the bed <laughs> so I said this is probably not great news <laughs> so all it was just said you have to look at you just rest for the rest of the year and that's it everything is fine so that's the way it worked out yeah. apart from that I've had a lot of well, a lot of good few sports hamstring injuries and groin injuries all that muscle injuries but lucky enough I never done any bone injuries knees anything like that So you, you, you were out for a long period you were out for what 20 months were you 21 months well that time I was out for um, that happened I suppose mid summer Yeah. and then in January then I got um, January 06 then I got the laser surge in my eyes I used to wear the contact lenses Yeah. and they were a bit a nuisance so between losing them and maybe a bit of grit getting into them and that was just, so I just went for the laser which to me was Fantastic job, really. Couldn't recommend it enough. Good, good. Big uh, yeah. thumbs up there for thumbs the up, yeah. surgeon. Yeah. Plug <laughs> yeah. Um, if you know who you are, you can give us a message there. Mr. O'Reilly. Ah, oh, Mr. O'Reilly. <laughs> some man, some man. Yeah. Listen, we're in Dunhamagan, the club, right? Yeah, yeah. You grew up here, obviously, and I know you would have played a lot on at home with the brothers when you were younger yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. What does the club mean to you around here? Yeah, sure. It's everything. Sure, look at as I said, when I finished 2012, I kind of had me back ahead like I was with Kilkenny since '98 with minor all the way up along, and I never really committed to the club full time, so. I suppose the club, the club, you all say, you start your club and you finish your club. And um, even we won the Junior all Ireland there last year and lads saying, God, the great for you to get back to Crow Park. But to me, it was great for the lads that never played in there, you know, to get a chance to run out in Crow Park and to play in the great stadium that it is in pitch. And, um, you know, it's just fantastic to see the club flourishing and we've doing all right underage recently. So we've a nice few young players coming along, so hopefully they'll keep progressing and drive the club forward. Did you feel a little bit of pressure on the day and all? Like, and obviously, you know, this is just personal, but like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're the man that's been there, done that, been here a lot of times in Crow Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the guys haven't been here. Was there a little yeah. bit of pressure on you? Yeah. Not, not from them, but yeah, from yourself? Yeah, yeah. yeah, not really. I don't put a huge amount of pressure on myself, but you'd always have your nerves for a match. But I always found Crow Park, even all Ireland Day or any match day, you'd be very nervous for the match. Walking around the parade, you'd be fierce and nervous then. And the minute the ball's during the game starts, it just Forget goes. Enough. It just absolutely goes. And it's like hurling on another pitch and you just you block out everything else. There'd be people asking you to hear the crowd or anything, but you wouldn't actually wouldn't hear a thing. Maybe there's such a crowd there, all you hear is this big noise basically, but no one really shouting at and so um look it's just it, I was trying to tell that look it's another pitch, you get out and you hurl your game and get on with it and don't get caught up and looking around the place, looking up the clouds in the stadium. And I, think they, I, think, I think they took your advice because... Oh, <laughs> they didn't in the first half, they were bad. <laughs> but we got going in the second half, all right. T- t- we obviously were looking around the first half too much. <laughs> you were, they were looking around to see where's the yeah, yeah. family sitting. Yeah. And, uh, but look, obviously a special day for the parish, fantastic for yeah, Dunham yeah, yeah. and um, you know, a big win. But obviously, yeah. are you still tipping around? Yeah, still hurling away. As I said, um, I said to you earlier, look, you're only young ones. And as long as they can hurl a bit and do a bit, I'll keep doing it, be it at whatever level with the club. And... Um, Look, I'll be old for long enough and I'll be looking in and even yeah. talking to some of the lads that weren't playing beat in Croke Park or the county final back with the Magan last year in the junior. What did they give him? Just be back out in the pitch again and 
you know, you get one chance and just make the most of it. Will we see Noel Hickey managing at some stage? God, I'm, I'm managing under five now in Dunamag at the moment, oh. so that, <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> that's tough going now, so I'm not sure it'll encourage me anymore. <laughs> right. Well, come here, listen to me. We're, we're, we're nearly there, so call it Sunday. Look, it's not sitting on the fence, but it's so hard to call. Like, uh, I think Kenny will have to play to the same level as they did again in Limerick to have a chance. If they play to that level, I think they might just go edge. But I think, I think, in fairness to both teams, I think both teams are going to bring a massive performance. And it's going to be savage hits, collisions, grey hurlers on both sides. So I just hope if it's coming down to home straight, I think Kenny might just edge it. But it's only going to be a point or two game in it. Brilliant. Listen, Noel Higgy, thank you very much. No problem, Stevie. Come thank, on, you thank you very you. much. Thank you.